Hey everybody, welcome to Bill Sky, the assembly guy, yet another video on assembler language. What we're going to do today is we're going to allocate variables. We're going to allocate memory, we're going to reserve memory, and we're going to do it in Linux. Now, there are other videos uh, for Windows and ARM for ARM processors, uh, so take a look at, this, at those as well. Uh, but they're all very similar to this one. ARM is a bit different, so take a look at that for a fully rounded education on how to do this. So let's get started. So what we have here is I've created a new project called Linux 64-bit variables. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to open this up with my Genie editor. And now there is another video on size of integers. We're going to go over a little bit of that today. Uh, go ahead and take it that that take a look at that. That was an introduction to variables, but today is the major league variable video. So what we what we we've seen here or what we've seen here in, in this template, on my functions template that I provide to you guys, we've already got a couple of variables here. We've got a thing called open prompt We've defined bytes, a bunch of bytes, and we've enclosed characters in double quotes. Uh, when you define a string variable, and this is a string variable, it is a set of ASCII chars. And you can use double quotes or you can use single quotes. Either one is fine. Notice at the end here we have a comma with a 0H. That is what we call a null terminated string. And in C and C++, just about every language on the planet when you have a string, you put a zero at the end, a null terminated character, and what that means is it's the stop sign. It's the stop sign for all of the functions that use strings to say, hey, the string ended on the character before the zero. So that is a very standard thing to do. What we have is we have a label, we have the data type, and we have the string, and really this is an array of chars. Welcome to my program. And then at the end of that, with the comma zero, is the null termination. Same thing with the close prompt. We've got a defined byte, and we've got all of the bytes. Notice this one's in double quotes instead of single quotes. And then it ends with the zero H, which is the null terminated. So that's a sim those are simple strings. We're going to do a little bit more with those in just a moment. But let's go ahead and get the integers done. And then we're going to do some floating point and then strings again. So let's create an integer. I'm just going to create a byte var, and this should be very simple. I'm going to define byte, and I'm going to go, um, I can go from zero to FFH, but I'm just going to give it a value of zero. And I always like to put the H on the back um, of that. So that is a single byte with a value of zero. Now, what if I want to allocate that, but I don't want it to actually have a value. I don't care what the value is. I'm just going to allocate memory. So I could do it this way down in the BSS section. Now remember we did this in the data section. If we want to create anything uninitialized, any kind of a variable that has no initial value, we can put it in the BSX section. And I'm going to call this a byte var2 uh, reserve byte. Now instead of define byte, you say reserve byte in the BSS section, and then you say I want to reserve a single byte. Now, this will actually make your application smaller if you put variables that you, or allocate memory that you don't have an initial value for in the BSS section instead of in the data section. So it depends upon what it is that you want to do. So that's a byte. Now let's create a word. So I'm going to say word var, define word. Uh, let's make that, I don't know, 0FFFFH. So remember, a word is two bytes. Every character is a nibble. If the hexadecimal value that you're putting into that word, or byte, or double word, or quad word, if it starts with a letter, you always have to put the zero in there. We're not allocating five nibbles here. We're just putting a zero in front so the assembler knows that it's an actual number instead of like a string or something. So there you go. Now if I want to reserve, a word, I would say reserve W, and I want to reserve 1. Now if I want, I could reserve 20 if I want. It's just a number of bytes or a number of words that you want to reserve. Now what are you actually doing here? I'm going to reserve 20 words or 40 bytes. You're just reserving a whole bunch of memory. 
you can use a single byte within that group, you can use one byte, you can use two bytes, three bytes, all 20, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna reserve 20 words or 40 bytes. Okay, so that's a word. Now let's go ahead a D word, define double. This is a double word, define double. And we're gonna put uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is our double word. If you wanna reserve a double word, You say reserve D for double word. I'm going to reserve one double word. You can't use reserve D, R-E-S-D, R-E-S-B, R-E-S-W in the data section, just like you can't use D-B, D-W, D-D in the BSS section. And again, anything in the BSS section is uninitialized. It's simply the quantity of things that you wish to reserve. All right, the last thing is the quad word, so a Q word. Define quad. Now this is a 64-bit application. You can also do this in 32-bit applications. I don't like to do that uh, because I like my variables to be the size of the registers. So let's define a quad word and we're gonna make that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and that has to be, uh, so the it, it's, it's eight bytes wide, so that has to be 16 nibbles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. 16 nibbles, that's it. And there's our quad word. You can put anything in there. You don't have to put 16 nibbles. I could reduce, you know, reduce it to actually smaller. It'll put that value into that quad word. And then let's reserve that quad word. And you just say reserve Q. Reserve quad. I'm going to reserve one quad word. And it doesn't it doesn't it allocates the memory it makes the memory available to you but it doesn't actually put a new value in there so those are integers those are the four major types of integers the more four most common ones you're going to use so let's move on now to floating point so this was integers now let's put a comment here oh I'm telling you if you don't use comments your life is going to be a living nightmare um, there was a time I was working for a company called Mark Marietta in Florida. I had worked probably around two, two and a half hours on an assembler language program. I was working on some F-16 night vision stuff, and um, I think that's all I can say about that. But um, I was sitting there working on it for about two, two and a half hours. I had an office mate, wonderful gentleman. I got up to go get lunch. I came back, totally forgot what I was doing. I had no comments in my code. And he started laughing. I looked behind me and he says, comments, dude. I knew it was going to happen. And ever since then, I've learned. I had to almost start from scratch. So I lost like two hour, two and a half hours. And what I had to do is I had to debug or I had to look at all the code I wrote. I had to hand trace it, figure out what I was doing. So please use comments. You are definitely going to be very sad if you don't. Okay, so floating point numbers. So a floating point number is just like you allocate it just like an just like a, an integer, but you give it a floating point value. So in so let me show you. So I'm gonna say a D word float, define double, and I'm gonna give it a floating point value. Now that tells the assembler to actually store that number in floating point format, which is completely different than integer, completely different than character. It is, it's called the IEEE format for a floating point. We'll get into that when we get into the floating point video, but that's how you allocate a floating point number in Linux. Or I could say a Q word float, define Q, 103.45. Now, this one right here, this is, this is called a single precision floating point. This right here is a, a double precision floating point. Now what does that mean? A floating point number that has higher level of precision means that your, your, your fractional part of the number is going to be much more accurate than a single precision floating point. So it's always good to do that. Now there's also a, a extended floating point. And that's the DT. So this is an extended precision 
flowing point. And the T basically means 10, means 10 bytes. So that's much larger, and it's going to give you the ultimate in, in floating point precision in Linux. All right, so that's floating points. Now let's take a look at characters. So character variables. I'm going to create a single character, a char, define byte, a. And as I said earlier, you can use double quotes or single quotes. It, do, it just doesn't matter. And a single char, if you're going to be using it just for some kind of a flag or something like that in your code, you don't have to have it zero terminated. If you are going to be printing it, if it's going to be something you may be using uh, to, to communicate with the user, it's always a good idea to put zero H at the end. And you can have a comma with no space or you can have a space. So if it's just a single char, that, that's all you can do. All you need to do. Uh, if you want to do a string, we did that up above. Hello there. I'm Bill Sky. And that's obviously going to be something that I'm going to be printing, so I always like to zero terminate it. Zero terminate it. Now, you can add stuff to the end of that. Uh, let's say if we want a string to, let's say if we want to say program error, try again. I can put a 0AH and a 0DH. And what that is, is that's the backslash N in C and C++. That's the end L character. That is the carriage return line feed characters. And what that'll do is when you print it, it'll print the string and then go to the beginning of the next line. So something that you might want to do. And again, it's always good to zero terminate any kind of a string that you're going to be doing any kind of printing or working with, because like I said, that is the stop sign. So that's character variables. What about arrays? So an array is a lot like a character or a string. I'm going to create an integer array. Oh, I'm going to, let's call this a byte array. I'm going to say define byte 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And there you go. I've got a byte array. And I've got five items in that. Each one of those is a byte. I'm going to say word array, define word, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, uh, uh, D word array. I think you're getting the idea here, right? 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Now, normally numeric arrays do not have to be zero terminated. You can do that if you want, but they normally don't have to be zero terminated. So um, you can make any size you want. OK, you can make these hexadecimal if you'd like. You can mix and match. I could even put something like this. I'm not sure if that assemble. Well, let's see if that will assemble. Yep, that assembles. So you can even do something like this. Now, the problem with that is that you've got a single char and a, and a quad word, so you're wasting a lot of space. But it's possible. It's a lot like Python. You can make your, your arrays just about anything you want. Um, if I wanted to make an array of chars, it looks just like that. Char array, define byte, A, B, C. Now, that char array is pretty much the same as a string. So you can do it that way as well. All you're doing is saying creating a single byte with the letter capital A, capital B, capital C, and that's exactly the same thing there. So you can do it any way you want. Um, I can even create an array of floating point. Float array. I'm going to make these big ones. So define T, 0.45, 5, 6, 7, 0.89. So I can even do that. And I'm going to save, and I'm going to make it, make sure everything looks good. OK. Now, what if I want to create an array and I want it to be really, really big, but I don't want to give it every single value? I mean, what if I want to create an array of 10,000 items? I don't want to um, have to put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to initialize every one. Well, there is a keyword called times repeating array initializer. And I can create an array called a big byte array, define byte. And really what I want to do is I want to say 
times 10,000 defined by 0h. And what this says is it says do the following code 10,000 times. And the code that it's going to repeat 10,000 times is the db0h. So that's going to say, that's almost like typing db0h 10,000 times. Crazy. Let's give this the correct name here. All right. Um, I could have also done this, big byte ray2, define byte 0h, define byte 0h, define byte 0h, infinitum, 10,000 times. I'd rather not do that. This makes it really, really nice. Um, I could also initialize those to some other value instead of 10. Maybe we may, or zero, we make them 99. Or we make them zero, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> zero AB, okay? And you can do these with bytes, words, double words, quad words, or T words, or T, t bytes. So you can do those with any size. Now you can also do this in the BSS section, uninitialized. I just want to create a whole bunch. Now it doesn't kind of make any sense to do it in the BSS section, but I'll show you. Um, I'm going to say alloc memory uh, times 10 reserve byte 1. So this is going to rep this is going to repeat reserve byte 1 10 times. And that's exactly the same as doing it this way. Reserve byte 10. They do the same thing. I'm going to reserve 10 bytes or I'm going to reserve one byte 10 times. So that's how that works. And that's how you allocate variables, how you allocate arrays, how you allocate strings. And after the allocation videos, I'm going to, I also have one out there for Windows and ARM. The one after this is we're going to show you how to use that data in the registers, how to move things around, how to manipulate them in the registers, save them back to memory and hope to see you at the next video.